Hi, uh, Rogue here again with a little quick video. Uh, so I was traveling recently abroad in New Zealand, and I found this PBO T7 gouache from France, which I have never seen sold in the U.S., but there was one of the tubes was on clearance for $5.99 New Zealand, so I was like, eh, why not? So I picked up a few different colors to make some sort of weird, unusual palette to give them a try. Oh, and also a little tiny Da Vinci brush to kind of play around with. Uh, so here I go laying the, the colors out on the palette. They went down pretty smoothly. They were pretty creamy. Very, very similar to like Windsor Newton. Aside from that purple. That purple had some watery issues, but it cleared up once I gave it a bit of a stir around. Uh, okay, and then I went about swatching. So, yeah, this is my first time actually doing like a, some sort of review or swatch test of like gouaches. Usually I use um, the, uh, what is it, M. Graham gouache. That was the first one I really tried when I was in college. Well, first I tried Windsor Newton, and then I tried M. Graham because it was a little bit cheaper in the U.S. And I fell in love with it. But it's always good to try new stuff. Especially stuff that you can't find so easily in the U.S. So, Naples Yellow is an interesting pale yellow that I use a lot for skin tones. Like a base skin tone that I can then tweak. It's a little bit easier than laying out like a really bright yellow and then trying to add white and stuff. It's already got some white in there. This Turkish red was the one that was on clearance, and I actually found that it was really pretty. Like, I don't know what the history of this pigment actually is. I'll have to look it up, but it definitely reminded me, like, oh yeah, this looks like a very warm-looking carpet. A very royal-looking carpet. And then afterwards, when I did the swatch, then I did a test to test how well it thinned out, and it, it did, th this gouache in general did pretty well. It wasn't too streaky. And then Prussian Blue, which is a nice color for doing some deeper shadows. Like, there, I wouldn't recommend it as a primary blue, but it's pretty nice for a secondary blue when you need something a bit cooler and darker. This one was not as dark as I was used to compared to other brands, but it still was pretty nice. As you can see, it thinned out pretty well. Not that much streaking, aside from the fact that I was working with a brush that's not a flat brush, so there's some irregularities due to it being a round brush. <laughs> Here I went back with the red, I was like, I don't like the way that thinned out. Let me try again. Okay, that's a little better. And then this Parma Violet. Now with this Parma Violet, I actually was expecting it. I kind of prefer violets that are like diox, dioxazine violet, but this is a very artificial looking violet. Not artificial, but definitely not not as deep as a diox violet. So I was I was okay with it, but I was also a little bit like, what am I going to do with this color? I don't know if I'll actually ever really use it because it's so it's definitely on the magenta side, and I prefer my violets to be a bit more on the blue side when I use them. Otherwise, I can just mix up a violet like that, I guess. And what am I doing here? Oh, yes, then I'm doing a opacity test, seeing how well it covers my pencil. And that Naples yellow covered up that line pretty well. So did the Prussian blue. There is a bit of streakiness on that one. Yeah, it looks like opacity of this gouache was pretty, pretty good. It wasn't, it wasn't chalky either, like some of those, some cheaper gouaches can be, so. I was pleased with how it performed, and now here I guess I'm mixing up some, just kind of playing around with the secondaries, what happens if I mix two colors together. I definitely would not recommend the Naples Yellow. <laughs> in a palette that's only comprised of three or four colors because as you can see it produced some pretty weak mixes like that's not really a good green it's like a grayish green and like 
that 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 orangey, the orange color wasn't too bad. It would make a nice skin skin blush type tone. Now I'm gonna try mixing the Parma violet and probably like either the Turkish red or the Prussian blue. And that produced a violet that was closer to what I was used to with the Diox purple, but it's still it's a bit muddy. It's not as pure as the Diox purple. I've convinced myself that if I want a Diox purple, I have to buy a Diox purple. So I actually have to add that to my palette still. It's not an essential color, but it's just something nice to have. I don't know what that was. I think that was a weaker vi variation of mixing like green and Naples and Prussian blue. Just because I wasn't p pleased with those initial sketches. Oh yeah, that that's yellow and and the Parma violet, and that wasn't too bad actually. Oh, I mixed Prussian blue and Turkish red in those previous three over there, and this is me mixing the violet with Turkish red and Prussian blue. I think so. Yeah, definitely the Prussian blue and the Turkish red are some deep colors that make some very pretty, pretty results. Um, overall, I am I am pleased with these gouaches. I'm not sure if I'll ever find them again because I haven't found a U.S. supplier for them yet, but they're a nice thing to add to my collection. And then, of course, uh, after this, I had to make a test painting. I didn't film it, but I posted it up on my Instagram. There it is. Isn't it so pretty? This was a bird that I had found when I was sitting for lunch at a, the University of Waikato in New Zealand. So, he's very cute. So most of that, yeah, that is the palette that I just laid out. Aside from the yellow up there, that I did add a bit of, I think, cadmium yellow from my M. Graham set. But I was pleased with it. So... Hope you like this video. Uh, also, happy Inktober. I'll probably be doing some videos related to Inktober eventually. So, until then. I don't work from drawings or color sketches. My painting is direct. I usually paint on the floor.